Last year, SG brought out this little one temp scale desert truck. It had loads of features. It was selectable two wheel drive, four wheel drive, high gear, low gear, LED lights, eight shock absorbers. And it was not a bad truck. However, it was expensive. And that's what put everyone off, including me. It was too expensive for what it is. I have good news. Good news. They brought a cheaper version out. Although before we look at it, if we look at the box, it looks exactly the same, but it's not. There's some big changes. It doesn't really tell you on a box. It still says two and four wheel drive, 45 miles an hour. If we look on here, it tells you about the gearbox and all the functions of it. It shows you the seven channel controller. But if we flick it over, that's a sticker there. The package content is for reference only. The actual reference number is subject to the actual product. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what is the difference I hear you ask? Well, apart from these weird stickers on the lights, it doesn't come with the stickers on it. Stickers are here. And I get why they put that protective plastic on the bodies, but it's a pain when you've got loads of screws to do to pull it all off. But anyway, I've put all the stickers on. So there's some slight differences with the stickers you get. The biggest change though, is this doesn't have that gearbox. So it doesn't have a high and low speed. It doesn't have selectable two wheel drive and four wheel drive. And something else it doesn't have that I've only just realized, this one's got an open diff and this one's got a locked diff. Is that more scale to a trophy truck or a desert truck? Do they have a locked rear diff? I'm not sure. And also, this one has only got four shock absorbers, whereas this one has eight. Probably just seeing it's got dual shock absorbers. One has a spring and one's just the damper. So they've removed all the functions out of that, so you've just got a, a basic point and shoot trophy truck or desert truck, no frills. Comes with a four channel transmitter rather than this seven channel one. You could argue that that was just a bit gimmicky and this is probably better suited. It's about, I think it's about 25% cheaper. I'd say it's still quite expensive. You do get in the box a nice selection of tools. You've got, I think it's one and a half up to three mil hex drivers. You've got a little wheel hex in there and some cable ties. Spare wheel nuts, there's two spare drive shaft pins in there. You might need them spare pins because I lost a drive shaft when I took this out. And then you get a set of instructions which are for the old one with the two speed gearbox. And then you get a little added bit for the new SE, the light version. So nice bright colors on this one. I went for the, uh, the gray and green on that, but this one, nice bright colors. I think as well, they've changed. It feels a little bit thinner, a little bit more flexible. This feels a bit harder. This thing took an absolute kick in and I don't think anywhere on the body broke, but I took it over the quarry, one of the worst places to take stuff because of all the rocks and stuff, but took an absolute kick in. Let's hope they haven't changed it too much where it's gonna split and crack sometimes with these bodies. If you have a hit on the top there or across there, it just splits it in half and it's not great. But that one took a kick in. Be interesting to see what happens to this if it has a few little bumps. Something I wasn't a fan of on this one was the rock hard tires. I mean, they weren't too bad when it was going along, but they are rock hard. And unfortunately they haven't changed that. They're still rock hard. Um, tires on there so they almost feel like plastic really two spare wheels on the back there you've got loads, loads of nice scale accessories on there this is the esc which i think is a really cool idea the esc disguised as a radiator so that's really cool a couple of scale jacks in there the suspension now only being four shocks rather than eight does feel a bit looser but this was quite loose anyway. I don't know if I changed the oil in it or not, but the front feels quite stiff, but the rear is quite loose. However, on something like this, pretty sure the real thing's nice and bouncy. So when it's going along, it looks quite scale. Couple of drivers in there, dashboard, roll cage. This whole body will come off, so you can have it just bare. And it doesn't look too bad, to be honest with you. You got a light bar up front there, 
You've got a light bar on the top. Don't think there's any light. Oh yeah, you have. You've got a light there at the rear as well. You just see in there, that is your brushless motor. I'm not taking all this apart to look at the gearbox and stuff, but, but as you can imagine, the gearbox is quite big on that because it's got selectable two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, high-low gear, whereas this is just a plain straightforward one underneath you might recognize it looks like something similar double wishbone suspension up front with a sway bar as well so you've got nice sway bar there and you can see if i if i push this down watch that wheel there you can see so the sway bar doing its job you also got one at the rear you've also got limiting straps at the rear there as well like i said that took a beat in so none of this broke which is good metal chassis there rear trailing arms the battery or batteries go in there. You can run it on dual or single battery. Metal rear drive shaft, check these pins. Like I said, I lost I lost that one and lost the drive shaft. That was that was the end of the play for me. It has got a nice amount of movement on the rear there. Bearings all round, CVDs up front. It has got some fake discs and calipers that you can just kind of see behind the wheels. 14 mil hex, so armor wheels will fit. I put some vortex wheels on this, they're quite wide, but they made it handle a little bit better, a bit softer compound. So if you want wheels, they're a 14 mil hex. I can't remember how fast this one went. So I'll go and watch the video and see how fast that went. And then I'm gonna charge some batteries and then we're gonna take this out, do a speed run. I think I'm gonna take this to a BMX track, I reckon. I struggled to find batteries for the other one of these, but these volts, these are like standard size 3S hard cases and they fit in there pretty well. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> right, I've got two of them, so I'm gonna put one on each side and then we have two 3S in parallel. That's 3,600 milliamp hours, so that should, so I think that makes it 7,000 odd milliamp hours of power. Right, transmitter on, uh, on off switch. Steering, not too bad. Front light, roof light, rear light, is it? Hang on. Good, we haven't got any indicators. I think it's got brake light though. Oh, it kind of comes on when you hit the throttle. Let's go have a play. Right then, 45 mile an hour I think we're looking for. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. What is going on? Steering is all over the place. Whoa, no. This is all over the place. <laughs> oh, it's hard, oh, it's to, hard control. to control. Whoa, it's Whoa, really, hard, really to hard to control. control. Oh, my, oh word. my word. Them tires are terrible. It's like dancing on ice. Oh man. Yeah, it's not good for the road. See if I can keep it going straight. No, 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 no. <laughs> right, that's full throttle. <laughs> remembered the road ends this time unlike when i was testing the rilalo oh shit oh, 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 oh. that's so slippery on them tires <laughs> 35 mile an hour 10 mile an hour short there's a surprise. Steering's not great. It's got like a huge, it's got a huge turning circle. <laughs> right, should we see if it grips up a bit better on this surface? Oh, I think it does. Yeah, that's better. That was horrible on that road. Whoa. Oh, I don't know actually. <laughs> it's a bit slippery. <laughs> At least there's an excuse to slide around on this surface. Very bouncy. Why have they put rock hard tyres on it? I want to try and get a decent jump in. There we go. Oh. Needs to be tough, doesn't it? If it's going to do that. I've just realised why it's um, not that easy to control. It's got a locked rear diff, hasn't it? That's why it's sliding around. Oh my days.
So my conclusion is that it's not very good on the dusty stuff. It's not very good on the road and uh, not that great on wet grass either. Oh, that's even looser now. I think we've lost all the oil out of them shocks. So they made it cheaper. They removed some of the stuff off of it and uh, well, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not great. Yeah, definitely no oil in them shocks now. Although it's better on this grass than it was on the uh, dust, so <laughs> there's a positive. I would certainly get a Senton 3S BLX over this. I'd go as far as saying I'd get a Traxxas over this one as well. Oh, it's not too bad on this stuff. Maybe that's because I've got used to it. Meh. So there we go. I don't know what to say about this. It looks really nice. It's got loads of potential. Tires are just way too hard for any surface, really. Suspension, I mean, even the one with eight shocks still, I didn't think the suspensions are that great, but that's definitely either lost oil or just, I don't know what's happened to it. Body seems to have holed up. I did have quite a few uh, little rolls and crashes and stuff. Nothing's broken on it, but yeah. If I was gonna spend this money on a one tenth scale short course or trophy truck, like I said, I'd probably be looking at a 3S BLX Senton, or dare I say it, a slash four by four. I know in America, you'll be able to pick one up for probably the same price as this. In the UK, it's a little bit more expensive, but yeah. Looks good. It's got potential, it's just a bit, nah.